Hey everyone, it's Keely here for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me for today's soap making video, which has been a long time coming, and I am so happy I can finally share it with you. This video is all about soap dough, and I'm going to take you through how I make it, and then also show you some of the embeds that I can, I'm going to make with this soap dough that are going to go into the next soap that I make. But first, I'm going to have a bit of a longer intro, give you a little bit of background into how I came up with this recipe why I came up with it and also how you can get your hands on it so if you've watched my previous videos you know that I've been using soap dough for a while and I've never really shared that soap dough recipe even though everyone has been asking me for it and there's a couple of reasons behind it the first is when I created the soap dough recipe, I wanted to make sure I had the same oils in it that were in my main soap so that I didn't have to add anything extra into my ingredients list. And I also didn't have to have one oil that I don't use for anything else um, set aside for making soap dough. So I basically used the oils that were in my recipe and I took away the shea butter. I don't know why I took the shea butter out, I just did. Um, it made an okay soap dough and I kind of adjusted the numbers by taking out the the shea butter that I do use I had to put that extra percentage onto the other oils so I did that it came out okay it's a very very temperamental recipe sometimes it sets nice and smooth and easy to use but I only get about two week sort of life out of it before it becomes too hard even though I store it in an airtight container other times it would come out it would be really lumpy and bumpy other times it would come out and it would have um, sort of soda ash but almost going all the way through the soap so it would crack and it would just be awful to actually use although it might actually look nice on the camera when you actually got up close and personal with some of the things I was creating they were very bumpy they had cracks in them they needed a lot of smoothing out with water and that sort of thing and I really was never very happy with it the other reason I never actually shared that recipe was because when I adjusted all my numbers after I started experimenting I thought I better buy B's book and see what she has to say about creating soap dough recipes and when I bought her book the light and shadow one one of the recipes that are in the book was basically almost identical to the one I'd created except for the fact one oil was one percent higher and another was one percent lower so I never felt I could share that recipe based on the fact it was almost B's recipe and I didn't want to be accused of um, tweaking the recipe and and giving it away because that's just not something I wanted to be associated with so I basically kept that recipe to myself for those two reasons but I really did want to create a recipe that was nice and easy to use um, kept in with the oils that I used in my soap and I've been trying to develop this for the last couple of years and at the start of this year I had this light bulb moment and it was one of these things I was researching something else found an article on something another unrelated sort of issue and I went ping I know what I need to do to my recipe to get it to perform nicely as a soap dough so I did some adjustments of the oils that I was using I made a little test batch of about 100 grams poured it out came back the next day and I was so excited to see this beautiful soap dough in my mold and I thought maybe this is a bit of a, a fluke I better make another one so I made another 100 gram batch in a different color and poured it out next day came in and I had more beautiful soap dough and I thought the real test is going to be whether I can make white and black soap dough with this recipe so I then made a white and a black so I made another 100 grams up did a white did a black came back the next day and I had this beautiful soap dough sitting on my bench so I was so excited that I'd finally cracked it and I thought well it's working for me I better make sure it's working for a couple of other people as well so I did send this recipe to two other people and one person has been using it and she said it is so easy to use she's been getting the same results I did she will have a video coming out later this month and I can't wait to see what she has actually created with it um, so watch out for that one and then I, the other person, I wanted them to check that it wasn't one of B's recipes before I actually started sharing it. So, how do you get your hands on my soap dough recipe is what you're probably all thinking before we jump into the rest of the video. 
If you are interested in my soap dough recipe, before we get into that, I will make this statement first. It does contain palm oil. So if you are against using palm oil in your products, this recipe is not for you. I will work on a palm free recipe that is not super expensive, um, but it's going to take me a little while to develop it because this one has literally taken me years to come up with but I just need to get that out there right now. I don't want any debates down in the comments section, please. Uh, but if you are interested and you're not opposed to using palm oil in your soaps, this recipe may be for you. And the way you can get your hands on it is that I, for the month of June 2021, I am sharing it with my patrons at the five 10 and 60 dollar volt levels so if you're on any of those levels if you join up at those levels you will get access to this soap recipe for the month of june 2021 plus when you join up you do get access to all the other benefits that are there on patreon according to the level that you join up and you'll also get a bonus recipe this month which will be for a powdered face mask which we're bringing out or paid powdered clay face mask so you will get to see that if you join up as well and if you really don't want to join up on the patreon platform i completely understand what i have done is i have left links down in the description box below to my website and the recipe will be available to purchase on the website for anyone that doesn't want to join or for anyone that is watching this video after june 2021 so if you are watching after june please don't come and join patreon and say that you can't find the recipe because it's not going to be there this is a super special bonus for patrons to get their hands on um, but otherwise it will be for sale over on my website. So with all that being said, let's go and see how I make the soap dough and then I'm going to show you the different ways in which you can make embeds with this soap dough. So let's go see. So the first thing I'm going to do is weigh out the hard oils and butters and get them all melted down. Now the first one I'm going to measure out is my palm oil which is a sustainably sourced and grown one and then I am also going to measure out some coconut oil and some shea butter. So now that I have got all my hard oils and butters in here, I'm going to go and pop them in the microwave just to melt them down. Okay, so the oils have melted down. I haven't got them quite all the way melted because I don't want to overheat them in the microwave. So I usually melt them until there's just these couple of extra chunks left and give it a good stir until it all dissolves down. And then I'll add in my liquid oils and we have some olive oil and some castor oil. So now that I've got all of the soft oils in there as well, I'm going to put this to one side to cool down and we are going to make up the lye water. Okay, so for the lye water, I still, no matter what size I'm making, always use them in these jugs because I like that they clip shut once I've got all my lye water in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is weigh out my distilled water. And next is my sodium hydroxide here. So now that I've got all of my light measured out in there, I'm just going to give it a bit of a stir just to make sure we don't have any stuck to the bottom. the sodium hydroxide and distilled water have been mixed together I'm going to pop my lid on the spatula I have just rinsed off with some cold water just to make sure it's nice and safe there I'm now going to leave these to one side and then we will be back very shortly and we will start making some soap dough 
All right, so let's make up our colors to start with. I'm going to do six colors. I have got some green sage mica in from Heirloom. It's a beautiful dark green. It's got a slight tinge of gold in there as well. Unfortunately, that gold doesn't come through into cold process soap, but it does um, come through in things like melt and pour. I'm only going to add about half of those spoons in here because we've not got an awful lot of soap in here. But I do want my colours to be quite rich in here as well. I'm going to add in some of this deep yellow. I'm going to add a bit more than half a spoon in this one because these aren't particularly good micas. But I've got them. They need to be used. I also got in some of this deep purple from off of Heirloom. Um, for those of you that don't know, my Micro Obsession have sold out to Heirloom, but before that happened, there was no micas on the um, on the My Micro Obsession website, and I was out of eminence, so I got in this purple, and it's absolutely gorgeous. But now Heirloom are actually selling the My Micro Obsession micas, and they do have the eminence, so I may have to get myself another tub of that, but I thought we'll try that one out. We're gonna do some blush mica in this one. So again, about half of a spoon. This is a quarter teaspoon I've got here, so I'm putting in about half of that. I am also going to do some of this Merlot, which is one of the creations by Fitz Micas that was sent to me by Autumn at KAJ Bath & Body. So I'll put some of that in there. And lastly, I'm going to use some really red mica powder in this one. Pop that in there. That's probably too much because this one is a pigment. So it, it does actually work really well. A little bit goes a long way. And now I've just got my oils from off of my um, mix that we're going to do. And all I'm going to do is I've got about a half a teaspoon here. I'll probably end up needing a whole two of those. And I'm just going to mix these colours up first. Because we're working with such small amounts of soap, it is easier to pre-mix your micas. So you don't have to um, mix the soap as much as if it was just straight up powder. Okay, so now I've got everything um, all mixed in, ready to go. It's time to get on to actually making this soap, which is exactly the same as how we make all of our soaps. So pouring in our lye water first. Now because my recipe here is quite heavy on the saturated fats, um, I do need to mix this up a little bit more just to avoid that false trace. Okay, so that is all mixed in. Now this is going to be a lot thicker than what my usual soap recipe is, again, because of all of the saturated fats that are in here. But the idea is we want our soap dough um, to actually be quite firm on the top of our soap. So I have made sure that I have got a really hard soap recipe. So those little um, things that we make are going to be nice and durable. So now I have to actually work fairly quick at this, um, just that we don't set up. What I'm going to do is measure out, usually I'm not um, super strict with how much I measure out, but this time around I am actually going to weigh this out just to make sure I have an even amount of all of my colours. out here I'm going to give these a really good mix to incorporate all of that color in here now I never add fragrance into my soap dough I prefer to have it on fragrance so that I can use it on any of my um, 
projects so I have not tested this recipe using fragrance so different fragrance oils are going to make this behave differently so I highly suggest if you are using this um, recipe make soap dough unfragranced if you are going to fragrance it make sure you make a small batch first all right so that is my green all mixed in looks really nice i love this new green i've got in now what i'm going to do is pour it into these molds now i only ever make small batches i pop it into small silicon molds because i do not want this to gel so i try to make sure that um, it's in a small enough mold that it's not going to gel because i find once it does that um, the soap dough goes really funny and on to the next color now this little blue silicon mold um, here's a little tip for you this is actually part of a really big mold there should be another six over on this side of the um, of the mold but I found them way too big I've actually got some circle ones as well and I just found that the molds are way too big they were too hard to handle um, you couldn't get them on a tray so that they didn't you know, move around when you were moving your molds. And they were really hard to un unmold your soaps as well because they were just so big. So I ended up cutting the mold in half. Just makes it so much more manageable and easier to store as well. So never be afraid to cut your molds up if you um, are having problems. That is a gorgeous, gorgeous purple. Let's pour all of that in here and I'll get all these other colours done as well. of those poured out I am actually going to cover this over with a bit of biodegradable film here oh try not to wasn't watching that try not to get the colors to go into each other so I'm just covering it over just to make sure that the air does not get to the tops of my soap and I am now going to leave this to set up overnight and we will be back very shortly and we will unmold them okay so it's been 24 hours since I've made these and these are looking really nice got a nice color to them as well so just going to peel that off and I'm going to pop them out of our silicon mold here and they do release nice and easily so let's get all of these out that yellow has come up beautiful. This red is a bit more of a brown, but that's okay because I've got some projects where I need that sort of more brownie red sort of color. Now these are all um, started their saponification process, but because soap can take anywhere from 24 to 72 hours, I actually like to leave my soap dough for an extra couple of days before I start playing with it, just to ensure that it has completely saponified but what we don't want to happen is for it to start its curing process so the idea behind this now is to keep it protected from the air by wrapping it up in some cling wrap but before I do that what I will show you is that if I just give that a bit of a squeeze and start to condition it you can see it does break off nicely and we've already at this stage it is a beautiful consistency for making the um, any sort of shapes and things that you want to do what I do like to do is just give it a bit of a squeeze I find if I don't squeeze it from out of this um, this form now with me and my hands I just struggle with it later so I just like to start getting it um, moving around a little bit like so but then I do leave it for the extra few days just to finish its saponification process so once I have got that all mushed together and put them back together 
I have my biodegradable cling wrap. Some of you may have seen a video I did a long time ago with some moisturizer and I had all sorts of issue with the biodegradable wrap that I used in that video. I have since found this one and it is so much better. It does stick to things. When the biodegradable cling wrap first came out, it didn't stick to anything. It didn't keep anything safe from the sort of external elements either. But this particular one that I have here is excellent and it does keep my soap dough nice and safe from the air. So I'm going to do the same with all of these. So I give them all a bit of a, a squish down and then wrap them up. The actual um, sort of conditioning I suppose of that soap it's not absolutely essential you could just leave them in their square box but as I said I do find it easier to do this now rather than later just because of I lacking strength in my hands so I have got all of those done up now to really help protect these from the air, I have got my little soap dough box here. I'll grab these two out so I can show you something with that. I'm going to pop them into my container here. So this is an airtight container so I know absolutely no air can get in here. But just to actually show you, whenever I do make my white, I do make a full half kilo batch of this. But rather than pouring it into a big slab mould, I still pour it into those little individual um, molds so that it's just easier to handle but you can see this one is about oh this soap dough I think I made about four to six weeks before this video you can see it is still nice and pliable I used to find my old soap recipe if I didn't use it within a couple of weeks then it would be all hard and I wouldn't be able to use it but this is still really nice and pliable that is the white and it's just got this beautiful color to it so I'm going to wrap that one back up but if ever you have tried making soap dough you'll know that black is one of the hardest colors to achieve it usually goes all grainy and horrible whereas the black it's still got a little bit of texture to it but I think that is just the nature of black but it is much better and nice and smooth as well there's a couple of little lumps and bumps but it is as smooth as I have ever been able to get a black so this recipe does work really well for the this one was made using some activated charcoal in this one and you can see it is it's still got a really nice consistent state to it as well unlike some recipes they just do not do a nice black so there that is what I'm going to do is leave these in the box for another two days and then we'll be back in just a moment and we'll start making some in beds for my next soap Okay, so our soap dough has been sitting and it has been saponifying. It's actually been in my box for about a week. I've been too busy to come back to it until now. So we're going to make a few different embeds. The first one I'm going to make is just a very simple flour and we're going to use some cookie cutters just to show you how easy or how easy it is to make them. So I'm going to break off just a small piece for now because this one does set up quite quickly once it is in the air. I like to work in just small pieces. So just going to get that condensed to how I want it to be and I'm going to grab some of my um, film here this one is a biodegradable one 
but I do find I need it to whether I'm using this recipe or any other recipe it's best to put the dough between some layers of film so that we don't end up getting stuck to everything because what we're going to do is roll this out into a nice thin layer half a mil. I'm going to pop that in there so it doesn't roll all over my bench and let's get this open back up. So we've got a nice thin piece. It's nice and smooth. Let me take that off. So we've got a nice smooth piece of soap dough all rolled out and all I'm going to do is going to leave it sitting on there so it doesn't stick to my bench. I have got a simple fondant cookie cutter thing. Now normally when I've used these in the past I've had to put lots of um, corn flour on it I've even had to cover it up with the plastic but what I have discovered with this recipe which saves so much time is if I just pop it down cut it I've also just pushed the button so we get a bit of an indent and look how easy that comes out of the cookie cutter and it just makes such a beautiful shape and I'm able to do quite a number of these quickly and just pop them out over on the side here before I was having to, if you've caught any of the videos where I have done this, I've had to cover it up with the plastic or with the, the film and then I've had to punch a few, unwrap it and it just took forever whereas this way it comes nice and cleanly out of the, the cutter. It doesn't stick which is absolutely amazing. So we'll start with those because I do want to show you a couple of different embeds. There is that one. That's just a tiny bit stuck on there. There we go. So we've got a few of those. I'm going to wrap that up because I do need to make quite a few more, but I don't want that to start um, hardening. And we'll use that a bit later. I'm going to use this paler yellow, which I made in my previous batch. And oh, what have I done here? keep that in there to wrap something else up so I'm just going to get a little piece from off of here wrap that back up and all I'm going to do is break off just a very small amount roll a tiny little ball like so I have some distilled water in my glass here got a little paintbrush just going to put a bit of water in there just to help it act as a glue and stick the two together and there's a little flower so I'm going to make a whole heap of those to go onto the next soap but you can see it cuts out nicely gives nice definition really easy to work with doesn't stick which is absolutely brilliant so I get these couple of little centers in here and what I find is then if I leave these sit on the side for just a couple of days they go rock hard. They're really, really hard. And that is the advantage with this soap dough recipe because at the end of the day, we do want our um, embellishments to be nice and hard so that they don't get broken when we go to package up our soap. So I'll finish getting these couple done and then I will show you the next little embed that I'm going to make. All right, so the next embed I'm going to make are some little fishies and we're going to use the extruder tool to do these and these are the discs that I have had from off of Lisa at I Dream in Soap. Uh, Wicked Lee also does have some little fish as well but these ones were just the perfect size for what I wanted. What I'm going to do is go back to this sort of lighter yellow. Again I'm going to grab a bit of that one. Not too much. I'm going to grab a chunk of this orange and I'm also going to get just a tiny bit of this red that we made and again red is another one of those colors that when you're making soap dough like your black it can be really really 
funny in its texture but this is our red and again it is nice and smooth easy to use now what I'm going to do is just grab these three colors and I'm just going to mush them together I'm not aiming to make another color I am aiming just to blend them up a little bit so when we put them through our extruder with our little fish our fish will look like he has lots of different colors so I don't want to mash it up too much kind of just splitting it and folding it into each other making sure that the color is all split around that's looking good give that a bit of a roll I'm going to use my extruder tool and I will leave links to this one down well for Australia there is a link to this one in the bottom and then in America I think the walnut hollow is the closest you can get unless you're ordering it in from overseas so I'll leave some links down below for this one I'm gonna push my mix in here it needs to be just a little bit thinner there it goes pop our top on and I have been using this recipe for the last few constellation soaps to make the stars and I found you get this really nice smooth extrusion from out of it when I've used previous soap recipes I find that gets lots of bumps and lumps and air pockets and all sorts whereas this one I find is nice and smooth and gives a really good definition out of these extruder discs so I'm just gonna wind this one out and there it starts coming we're not really gonna see um, what these actually look like until they are in the soap and I will probably have to make a few of these because this is quite a big tool and I don't think I'm gonna get it quite long enough for my mold so you can see it's come out quite smooth on there as well with lots of definition where it is needed as I said this is probably not going to show up the best until it is in the soap and I'm going to need to make a couple of them but you can see let me just tidy this end up a little bit because this is still soft at the moment I have just a little bit on there you can see there is her little fishy how cute is he and he's nice and smooth and clean and very identifiable as a fish whereas occasionally I've found when I've extruded things with my other recipe um, it didn't have that nice smooth look to it so really really happy with how this extrudes out of the tools and then I will show you the final embed that we're going to make for the soap as well I'll be making lots of these other embeds after the video Right, so for the final embed, I've brought you down low so you can see what I'm doing. I have got the dark yellow um, soap dough that we made. And all I'm going to do is break myself off about a 2 gram piece. That is quite big, so we'll wrap the rest of that up so it doesn't dry out. So I'm going to break this down until I get to about 2 grams. That will do there. And I'm going to just roll this up into a sort of ovalish sort of shape all right so we're rolled up into our little oval sort of shape all I'm gonna do is I kind of want the front to be flattish but I want the back to come up into a sort of point and I'll give you a bit of a close look almost like a teardrop but with a point at the back so that is what I have got there and that's looking pretty good I do want it to have a fairly flattish bottom so it sits nice and flat on whatever I am working on. I'm going to get another little piece here and I want it to be probably about a gram if that, just under a gram. So I've got that one and I'm going to roll that one into a little ball like so. I want this one to be fairly round but we can always play with it. So I've got that one there what I've got with this sort of leftover piece just going to break off a tiny tiny little bit more kind of roll it round and but then flatten it and what I want to do is kind of create this is going to be really hard for you guys to see because it's so small but I'm creating another sort of teardrop sort of shape like so and I want a second one of those as well so I just broke off another bit rolling it into a little ball squish it down and then kind of push the end to make that sort of teardrop shape and then I'm bending that pointy bit up a little bit like so and then this one's probably 
a little bit too exaggerated in the point so I'll just do that one again all right that's better now with this bigger piece that we've got here I am just going to take one of my tools that have got a little ball I'm just going to make a couple little scratch marks and then I am going to use my water and brush just to put a bit on there and one of these tiny little ones that we've just done just going to stick it onto the side and I've got this um, fondant tool here I'll leave a link to this um, tool set that I got off of Amazon Australia it's really really good it looked weird at first when I first got them but they are really really useful and all I'm doing is it allows me to smooth that soap dough onto my other piece of soap dough so I know that it is well and truly stuck on there some of you may see what we are already starting to make going to do the same on the other side trying to get roughly the same sort of placement if I can a bit of water just a tiny bit of fluff and we'll grab that one I'm going to pop it on there make sure that it looks fairly even which it does and then I'm going to use this tool again I'm just bringing down the edge of that little piece and mushing it mashing it <laughs> sticking it on to the bigger piece like so and then I've got this other tool I'm just going to put just a couple of little lines on here it's going to be really hard for you guys to see on the camera but in person you can actually see them just gives that a little bit more definition Whoop. let's curl that one up just a little bit more and that one all right so that's what we've got so far so can you see we are starting to actually build a little duck here so we've got that one I'm just going to put that tiny piece back away so it doesn't dry out and we can keep using it for the face I am going to use some of this darker orange and I'm literally going to break off the smallest smallest little bit that is way too much just another tiny tiny little piece going to kind of roll it into an oval shape squish it down just a little bit push the back in I will we'll give you a closer look once I get it shaped it's kind of like almost an oval squished at the back and I'm gonna get my little round piece here again I'm gonna use one of my tools I think I like that to be the front I'm just gonna make a bit of a sort of indent in there a bit of a hole in there I'm gonna put some water and then I'm going to stick my little piece of orange and this is going to be his beak I think that's a good size just going to make sure again using this other tool just going to make sure that those soaps have hid, adhered together like that and then I'm going to grab this other one and I'm just going to put a little extra detail I'm just going to put a bit of a line in the orange there hopefully you'll see on camera you see we've made like a little mouth to go on there to make his eyes again I'm going to grab one of my tools with the ball on the end of it I'm just going to make two little holes where I'm kind of thinking they're gonna go I have my black soap dough over here and this is just going to be a very very tiny piece that we need to fill up those little holes there and look I threw his body over on the ground so you can see that this is really really easy to work with and you do get some really nice fine detail out of this um, soap dough as well which I've been been really happy with I used to like the other soap dough I did my old soap dough recipe and it's not one I use, I have shared because it's so close to one of the ones that actually is in B's book um, I used, it used to be really really temperamental on me sometimes it would work really well and I'd get a really nice consistency but I'd only have a, a couple of weeks to actually work with it and then um, other times it would go really bumpy or it would just be too hard and I couldn't use it right from the beginning so 
this soap dough has been a long time coming for me and I'm really really pleased with how it is coming together and I'm so happy that I'll be able to um, share this with my patrons and also offer it for sale over on my website so again I'm just making some marks on the top of the body here it just helps with that sort of adhering it together and then I'm gonna pop the little head on our little ducky and I have 18 of these little ducks to make so there he is I do have a couple of others which I have been working on I didn't quite get him flat so he doesn't sit flat but he's been drying for a few days so I can't sit him flat at all but they're all going to have their own little individual characters as well so I've got four of them I have another 14 of them to make they are super hard already these have been sitting here for about three three days now and they are super hard so they're gonna stand up on my soap okay so there it is that is my soap dough recipe um, as I said it is available over on the patreon page for anyone that is on the five dollar and above level so that's the five dollar ten dollar and the vault level now, if you do come and join patreon for that sort of month of June 2021 when the recipe is available you will also get access to all the past posts that I have put out according to the level that you join at and you'll also get access Access to this month's recipe which will be a powdered clay face mask recipe so there are lots of options for you if you do come and join us over there for one month you don't have to stay um, you can easily cancel subscriptions if you feel that patreon is not for you now if you really do not want to join the patreon channel but you would still like to have access to this recipe I do have this recipe for sale over on my website and I'll leave links down in the description um, below so you can can easily access it please keep in mind this is a palm oil recipe I will be working on one that doesn't contain palm but it has taken me a couple of years to actually perfect this one so it's going to take me a while to come up with yet another palm free uh, yet another soap dough recipe so just bear with me on that one but if you um, don't mind using palm um, this recipe may be a good one for you so I hope you have enjoyed watching how I made my soap dough and then all the little creations I've made. If you want to see the soap that this is going into, make sure you subscribe to the channel and even follow along with me on Instagram because I will let you know when that soap is coming out on the channel. So until the next one, I hope you have a good one and I'll see you then. Bye. <music>